500. And uh, as you know, we were looking for a, um, a 62-odd percent retracement level uh, for the rally, the A, the B and the, the C here, uh, which is probably completed uh, in here now. Uh, but to get confirmation of this, we need to move below the 1650 here. Let's just go in and have a little look at uh, this situation uh, through here in terms of um, the two hour chart here. So um, the, the A wave here is complete, the B wave is fine. The C wave here is normally in five waves and we don't have that five waves yet. We have the wave one, the wave two, the wave three here and this looks like a wave four here but if if this if this here on the cash market not so much on the futures market or CFD market if this move comes down through here and overlaps the top of wave one here then we'll have overlapping wave structures and then that makes that corrective here and then we would um, then would relabel this in a more complicated correct correctional pattern through here as having this as an A and a B and a C so basically a W, Y and an X up through here but let's just see how this goes the bottom line is is that the 1650 is the medium level here it's the line in the sand and while the market is above that it's supported and uh, while it's if it uh, finds it as resistance obviously it's um, in bearish mode from that but also you need to use a bit of common sense as well because the move down through here um, didn't find it as resistance through here did it and the move up through here so far hasn't really found it as tested support yet either so really the correctional this correctional pattern whatever it may be is still really working across this level here so uh, we just need a little bit of time and patience for uh, this to unfold through here. Um, if we do get a, if it doesn't overlap through here and pushes up and makes a new high there, then we've even got a more positive structure occurring. So then we would uh, need to reassess uh, this down through here as the um, as as the actual correction itself are very simple and sharp. But that's not normally the case in a. In a, in a wave structure like this here so um, this is just sort of outlining it in a little bit more detail through here the um, you know we're pretty sort of confident of, of, a, of a move down um, because we've got a nice clean five waves here and if that's the case here getting five waves here that means that after some type of ABC rally through here then we'll get another five down Okay. Also, just drilling into this little section just here as well, um, we can look at this uh, overnight here as down for one here, back for two, down for three, back for four here, um, and down for five if we get a, a new low in here. So this is still playing out through here, and this wave four here could get sideways and complicated. So we need to allow it to have you know three to five swings across here before we see that but if you do see that we get a new low below this one here then you know that we've actually got five waves from that high there and what that means is we can expect to bounce off the 1650 and we would see a move up in three waves uh, as such moving um, moving up through here in the basically a uh, an ABC correction through here and then we would see because we got five waves here after a correctional pattern like this may just come to the 60 here um, but we'll use the 65 because it's got um, the supply level there as well um, but because we've got five here in that case if that is going to be the case then we'll get this three wave here and then we'll get another five to the downside as such here and then an ABC correction here and then further down from that point there so in terms of uh, shorting this it's good to get that five waves down here to confirm the direction and then you get the three wave rally through here and then you look for a retest on lower volume here and if the retest is at 1660 well then that's fine we can take it from there so the S&P 500 is looking <coughs> quite good actually this is the Dow we don't want that this is the daily chart I just want to have a look at a few things for myself here actually so this is the S&P 500 on the daily chart I can just bring this in here just but I just wanted to really sort of check this trend here I might just have a look at the S&P 1000 for a second it's just a little bit cleaner what I mean by cleaner it gives this wave two here uh, some 
uh, a, a good possibility. F uh, f well, let me just from this point here to there, um, 1660. So, just um, sorry about this. I'm just doing some. <laughs> I'm doing some work that I should have done um, this morning. Um, just uh, transports. The Dow transports always a. Um, I'm just going to have a look at the monthly here just to get the bigger picture as well, and I'll just fill you in a bit here as well. So. Um, this is monthly chart here for the for the Dow transports, which obviously have a strong impact on things as well. And um, <clears throat> the structure that we can see here basically is uh, this. This is at five thousand through here, so that's a you know nice good pattern at the five thousand sitting on here as support. And obviously you take the break out of that because it's tested support. But what I'm more interested in here is looking at um, uh, just. Bear with me a sec, look for the, oops, the wrong one. Just looking for the 200 target market, target point here, which is 6.8, which is the next minor trading level, which would be right. So we'd be looking for a five wave structure from here. That's, because that's occurring at the medium level here, 65 here. So that, that's that. So that's we'd still be looking for. This is an ABC across the 64, 65 here, which is the medium level here. The 65 there, if you know the 65. So we'll be looking at a wave four there, and then we'll be looking at a wave five to the upside to that point there. So right, we're still sort of looking for a move uh, down to six thousand here. So. Um, yeah, it's a bit tricky in a bullish market because you've got to kind of, you know, you can see that it's reasonably strong. Um, just, just check on the volume. It's nearly the it's nearly the end of the month, so we've had we've had lower lower volume on this on this last bar through here. So that would make uh, that would be preparing it for for the correction, which it is correcting really at the sixty five here um, when we look at it in terms of. The, the the daily chart here, so that's it, at um, sixty five, occurring there at the medium level there. So it's really just a reaction from this here. So um, yes, yeah. So yeah. Look, it's just just um, you know, it's just pretty much doing this sort of. This is what we're sort of thinking. Normally, the wave four here would break the trend line through here anyway. Um, Right, just sort of waffling on a little bit there. Look, but the the bottom point line here is that the sixteen fifty. Uh, if we do get five waves down, that's confirmation that the sixteen fifty will be broken, and then we'll be looking for three wave counter trend, and then further to the downside. The um, the the uh, the Dow Jones has um, has rallied much higher here, so that's a a bit of reason for concern, but I'm more interested in, in looking at the S&P 500 as such uh, because it's a broader base, um, you know, the, yeah, so let's just, we'll stay with that one there. But uh, if, if uh, let's just explore this for a moment, because this has come so high here, you know, it does give us, um, it does give the purpose of having the correction done in here already and this being a one, two and a three up through here, um, but once again, we don't want to see any overlapping wave structures. So uh, just still come in here a bit further. Okay, so this is, I've just sort of looked at this in a positive light through here. So even though I've got this as an A here and a B here, this is on the 20 minute chart here, and looking for the C wave to go to the upside. So I've got this counted here as, as we we're counting yesterday as five waves up for wave one, wave two. And this seems to count one, two, three, four, five for wave one, wave two here, wave three, four, and five here, just for wave three. So that would leave wave four here. Now we don't want wave four to overlap the top of wave one here, otherwise that will be overlapping wave structures. So this can still have a positive move to the to the upside through here. Uh, if that's going to be the case, then 
it, it can't really break this 15,372 there. It needs to stay above that. And it also next needs to find support on the 15,400 here to be positive. Uh, and then it needs to find support on, if you're going to trade it long, we'll trade it long off the 15,450 through here as well, uh, through here. So it can be counted like we did with the other market. The S&P 500 is down for one, back for two, down for three, back for four. But I, we do need to have a look at this being a a positive situation through here. Um, I know that the markets are correcting, um, but it's how far and how big and ugly they actually get. So we just need to be a bit um, a bit mindful there. And that would be the same for uh, the European markets as well. Just on the four hour chart here for the FTSE here, we were looking for, we know that we'd got five waves to the downside through here, and we're calling that as wave one. And we were looking for a wave two to, to, to move back as well, which we, you know, in line with the S&P 500. And that's kind of shaping up quite nicely. Um, we need that to move down into the 6700 here now to confirm uh, this this whole structure moving down further into the 6500 here, which is the medium level through here. So a breaking of the 67 there. This would be the 20 minute chart for for that. It's just the C wave um, ABC rally moving to the upside. So it really needs to stay below that high here. Um, yeah, it's all panning out. So what we can expect here, you can see that little five wave structure in through here. The the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five here. So that means after some type of correction through here, which could come back to this group two area through here, may not, it may just have done its dash there, depending on how weak it is, uh, but then another move down through uh, here further. So here, so if we do move back up through here, then if we move above the, the 67.50, the midpoint, then um, that's a little bit higher than there there so if the market does move above the midpoint and then finds itself as tested resistance under there then you can look to short from that point there and look for five waves down and the five waves down should be the same length as this little five waves within here as well because normally if you get well if you get if you get five waves here in the opposite direction to what the market's been traveling at then you'll get a five here you get three here another five so that's one of the good things with Elliot that's pretty assured there. <clears throat> the uh, Australian market as such is um, reasonably simple. We um, looking yesterday at um, <coughs> a wave three low coming in through here and looking for a retest back into the 5,000 area through here. So if we just focus on this, you can see here that this little move through here is in uh, three waves. So that makes it corrective. It's not an impulse wave. It's not going to move it can move up further, but it's still corrective. At some point, it will roll roll over and move move lower. Now, this wave four is first of all um, uh, side get a bit sideways and complex. Uh, so this particular little three wave structure in here just may be the first leg in the wave four correction. So we can get three legs. So an A, a B, and a C wave here. So that would leave Wednesday as a as a sort of uh, you know, further down, making new lows. But Thursday could be the rally day in the bear market. Okay, so we may get an A, a B, and a C through here. So we're just going to need a, need to be a little bit uh, careful through here. What we were looking for yesterday uh, from down here, I think we, that's right. Remember, we were looking at those little five waves just here and a market reset here. Um, but because we got five waves here, we can. We, we understood we'll get another five here, and, and that's sort of been the case. But um, wave fours, as I just mentioned, can be a little bit sort of tricky. So we really need to sort of give this some consideration here. So we know that it's not going to go back too far. It could come back up to this area through here. So I guess, you know, if if the if the, if the the S&P 500, well, it's a bit late by that time, isn't it? Um, I see the trouble with Wednesdays and Thursdays is that they can be Wednesdays can can have a have the session going in one direction in the morning and then another direction in the afternoon in Australia. So I always say it's a V-shaped day in a bull market. Uh, it's uh, trades lower in the morning and closes higher in at, at no, uh, in the afternoon. Uh, so in a bear market, it would be pretty much the opposite, making a new low, and that would leave Thursday as the rally day. So we could quite easily get. Um, you know, an A wave here, 
a B wave retesting support back down here or even covering that gap on the cash, uh, then or the futures market from the day before, and then a C wave up here. If this C wave here it would normally be around the same length as this one here, so it would leave uh, this market, this wave four up here at that stage. So we just need to be a little bit careful from that. So support, I guess, if this just moves straight up here and found support on 49.72, we could go long from that point there. Okay, that would be your, your long point there. Going short from here would just be a little bit tricky, but it could be on the cards uh, here. Or even if we get this move down through here, I wonder if we've got this on a smaller thing here. Just try and see what's going on on the 10 minute chart here for a second. I mean, we can see that we've got a three-wave structure up through here. And if this, when this moves down through here and overlaps the top of this one here, that's what makes it an A and a B and a C correction, the overlapping wave structure. So we can see that this is, uh, that's corrective. So we can still see there's more, more downside to come. It's just as, you know, will it bounce off this 49.50 of support and try and come back up through here as the, as the thing. Normally we don't trade wave fours. Uh, so that's, you know, that's the, um, that, that's the sort of situation. But we know this is corrective. You can short it. You can put the stop up here or, or, or up here. But any support on the 49.20, uh, 49.72, then you need to be on that side of the fence. On, yeah, so the, yeah. All righty. Well, that's sort of enough there. It's not, there's not a clear, even though that we know it's corrective, we don't have a clear passage within the wave four yet. So just be a bit mindful of that. Uh, if I had to count this down here in a bit of a um, in a bit of a guesswork, it would be as this. It would be this would be down for one, back for two, down for three. This would be the whole fourth wave here, and then the wave five here. So the wave five would be the same length as wave one here. Uh, once that's completed, there, if that's going, if we're going to get five waves here, then we'd be looking for um, uh, a counter trend here. Whoops, I've made that a bit of a mistake, but anyway, uh, a three wave counter trend, an A, B, and a C here, and then we'd be looking for another five waves down through here, and that would be in line with the S and P 500 from from that point there. So, right, let's have a look at um, <clears throat> at commodities. Okay, starting with base metals and starting with copper through here. Um, on the intraday, two hours, we were looking for, uh, well, our five little wave structure down through here. And that would suggest that after a A, B, C correction, then we'd get further downside through here. And that's why we've been short in, in, in the material sector, just trying to get a few short sort of things on there with, with uh, Rio and so forth. So... Um, uh, that's panning out quite nicely. I just want to also point out too that the 330 here is the top of group one, minor group one. So it is, it, it, it's very important as support or resistance. Um, then when you're working with, with, with the closest largest number, then you also need to work with the next degree smaller uh, in, in, in the level. So that would be the 8 here, the 328. So the 328 is tested resistance here is where you would be adding to your positions. Even if this market here had this here uh, and you were, you know, shorting uh, you know, FMG or Rio or, you know, closely related stocks as such, then, you know, this is this, this is pointing out that you would do, do add to them as well, you know. Uh, on the on the upside, if if uh, if if there was an error made, then the uh, this is group one here of you know minor group one the three that's what three is always is is the group one. So then you've got thirty one, thirty two, and thirty three here, the top of group one here. So if support was found on this sub level group one, then you would be trading long at that point. Okay. So what we're seeing across here so far is we're seeing a corrective pattern. Pattern. So we're seeing the trend and then we're seeing a corrective pattern. So uh, while that high stays in place, it is a corrective pattern. Um, it's lower than this one here. So um, it's, yes, it's possible that that's an A, B and a C to here and then the rest of the trend to here, but I doubt it. Um, and that does have five waves in it, but that's what a C wave does as well. So as long as that high stays in place, we can short continue to short the, uh, you know, the resources. That's the main point. Even though it hasn't confirmed, uh, you know, the, the structure to the downside yet on this side or, or 
te- retested uh, and created resistance there to confirm that sellers are in control of the market at that price point. Uh, the precious metals and looking at gold here, as you know, just it's always good to start from the bigger picture sometimes now and again to get the bearings. So, you know, we're looking for wave four there. We've got that. So now we're looking for new lows through here. In this move down through here, you can see that that's the strong third wave in here. So you know that we've been working with a uh, fourth wave correction uh, through here. And uh, as long as it really stayed above the, you know, the 14 uh, 100, you know, everything was pretty rosy in terms of a corrective pattern and looking to go further to the downside. So if we drill in that and have a little look at that, um, this is what we're looking at so far. So there's a couple of different ways to, to count all of this here, but um, I had one way on our on our, on, on the site. Uh, this was the other way here. So look, we're just basically looking for an A, a B and a C correction through here for the A wave the B wave in here and the C wave up through here in five waves, the one, two, three, large fourth wave and up for the fifth here. So it's, it's, re- it's, it's, it's possible to assume that, that we've got this wave four into place. However, it's not confirmed. And what would confirm it would be a breaking of, of, this, of this trend line through here. But also in terms of price, we want that group two here, the 1372, the most important point in here, to become the retested resistance. And once you've got that, then you can look to short and look to add once the 65 becomes the re- retested resistance. And then also you can cover it at 50 if you're just trading a session but uh, otherwise there'll be a, because there'll be a bounce off off uh, off the 1350 1353 here back to the 1360 maybe to the 65 uh, and then then move down and finding support under resistance under the 50 five second strongest number and then there'll be a bounce down at the 30 back to the 40 and then slowly work down through there so um, there's going to be support in here as you can imagine um, you know and even this possibility of you know of, of another higher move up through here as well you know so that's why it's so important to have that 1372 as the retested resistance so that's what we're waiting for if you see it then you'll know what to do at that point there Alrighty, let's have a look at FX because the uh, US dollar is also pushing up and that's another thing too that I wanted to point out as well is that um, uh, you know the higher US dollar obviously commodities are traded in US dollars and you know that obviously puts pressure on them um, but it doesn't always affect them sort of instantly so to speak but what can be sort of more uh, appealing in terms of analysis and, and, and trading is, is seeing you know if the markets have their individual character and going their own ways or are they all correlated and which ones are correlated so um, you know the the gold here has been correlated with the indices so if our count is right on the indices then it's going to be right here and the same with the euro as well. So when they're in fear mode, they tend to all look at each other and, and uh, move the same because they're unsure about the situation. So understanding that uh, is a nice tool to, to, uh, to work with. But let's have a look at the US dollar. Okay, the uh, US dollar through here, as, as you know, on the daily chart here, we're looking for five waves up, the one, the two, the three. Uh, the four and the five and it does appear that the, f- the fifth wave is uh, starting through here so we can expect that high to be taken out through there in terms of uh, drilling into that a little bit through here as you know we've been working through this this sort of correction this three wave correction through here and um, you know looking at w- looking at the 8350 as you know support for that that wave c of wave four here um, you know, the main point was that even if it did break that through there, then we're still looking at the 83 here while it's above the 83, which is the top of minor group one, then the market remains positive. So we'll be looking at a uh, positive, uh, when I say positive, I mean impulse wave to the upside uh, through here. Um, Let's just have a look at that here. This is just on the 30 minute chart here. Uh, and this is from the from the low through here. There's a couple of good things here. Well, uh, we can see that you know we can see that it's impulsing to the upside. Nice clean structures and 
ABC here, nice wave, another little ABC structure here as well. So it would be one, two, three, four, five. So this 84 here, the top of group one would be 10, 20, and 30. So we can expect this to have a correctional pattern across here. It needs to correct the wave structure from this point to that point, so an A, B, and C across here, so I can spend some time through here, but looking, eventually looking for that 8430 to become support. Once it becomes support, then the target naturally goes to the 50. There'll be a reaction there back to the 40, but once the uh, 50 has got support, then we can start looking up to the next level, which is the group two here, the 8472 area, uh, and then the 85 here. So support on 8430, take time to develop, will separate the consciousness from 84 here, the closest largest number. Um, but while, that's, while that hasn't got support, there's, there's always the possibility for it to check back in through here because it can be counted as one, two, three, four, and five to here. So that means a larger A, B, and C coming in through here. Okay, so um, just, but the main point is, is that it's positive and it, in one way or another, it should continue to move up. It's just a question of will it find support up in this little area here or will it come back into the the larger support, the 84, before it moves off up through there. So um, just a little bit of navigation. But, you know, that little, that two two options that we've got through here would reflect back in the euro mirror it pretty, pretty much the same. So this situation here, um, you know, we can have this as... Uh, those two options, just hold those in your mind there for a moment because we'll look at that on the intraday, on, on the mirror version of the of the euro here. So we can have the A, the B and the C from here and wave four is done and dusted. And then we go down for one, back for two, three, four and five, bounce off here, A, B, C, back up and then down again. So that's all possible. The other the other possibility that we've got is a, um, a little bit more complicated than that where we have a bounce off this trend line through here and a move back up through this area here, and then a move down through here as such. Um, so let's just have a look at that. And that's kind of what we were talking about yesterday, actually. This is just the one hour chart here. And sorry the charts weren't posted up on the um, on the site. Uh, we've just, we just had um, uh, trouble with the website and it just took a while to fix it. We lost all the modules and we had to sort of find them and recover them and all those sort of things, a bit like losing things on your hard drive. Um, look, anyway, this uh, Euro thing here is, um, uh, you know, we've, we can have this as a, an A, B and C for wave four here as such. Uh, you know, as long as it stays under the 130, because that's the top of group one there, as long as it stays under that, then we're in bearish mode here, okay? The, the, the tricky thing is, is that we can see that it's retested at high here lower retest here and this is something that I mentioned yesterday as well in terms of uh, finding uh, you know some short trades through here one of the things we're looking for was a series of lower highs so if we do get a bounce off here which we can call wave D because uh, looking at things in 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 um, basically in three wave swings and this E wave here would also be in three waves as well so it'll be interesting to see if it you know stays you know under the trend line or at least stays you know, above here somewhere. So the lower highs, if you've shorted the lower highs, then uh, continue to, to, to do so. But do expect to bounce off here, how far it comes back up. Look, it may only come back up to the 129 and roll over from that point. That's where the two options on the, um, on the US dollar that I just mentioned would play out as well. So there's just some, there's just some wiggling, this possible wiggling in here before we see further downside through here so uh, we can say that the what the 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 the, the 129 hasn't been retested yet so that's something that we can look for um, so if we get support above the 128.72 well then that would be the case uh, then look for higher ground and it could go all the way back up here but if it does go above the 129 and then comes back under and finds resistance then you short it from there use that to add on to it use the midpoint to add to it and then uh, of course the 128 as well but it'll get a bounce off the 128 so you probably want to cover that into into that point there so um, there's a little bit to, to, to consider uh, here uh, so I suggest just um, you know if it does come back up here 
uh, pops up above the 129 and finds resistance on here, then definitely short from there and then short from under here. Uh, if it just goes to the 129 and then find some resistance under the uh, 128.72, we'll then look for a short there and adding at the 65 and then adding under the 50 as well because we would be making new lows uh, below the 128 through here. So, um, yeah, uh, so basically a bearish bias. It's just, you just got to get through a few little wiggles there. Just, right, just having a look here. This is the... Um, this is the euro here, which is very much like the Australian dollar as well. So I can see straight away that obviously this is the third wave down through here, isn't it? Because it's the longest and strongest. And obviously this is a lovely fourth wave through here, um, an A and a B and a C. And this is the fifth wave through here. Uh, that fifth wave may not be finished because that this this pattern here would be this trend here is an, is, is an exact um, picture of this larger trend here just smaller so that little wave four here if it is a wave four would be this little, same as this one here so there can be another little move down through here anyway point being is that because we've got five waves down through here we'll get some sort of counter trend uh, to the to the upside from that point there so uh, do expect you know, the, the wave, low of wave three and the wave four is, is a slowing of the trend. There's a beginning of the trend, the middle of the trend, and the end of the trend. So that's kind of where we are. We have to expect a uh, retracement level um, up there somewhere of the 61.8%. So, you know, we can be looking back up at the 129 here in three waves going back up there. So an A, a B, and a C wave going up through here once that's done and dusted then you can look for the move down through here and use these sub-levels to get into there. So the Australian dollar would have developed the same as well through here as well. We were looking for, uh, on the four-hour chart, as you know, we are looking for the A, the B and the C for wave 4 into 98. We only got to 97 through there, so let's just drill in and have a little look at that uh, as such. That's the 30-minute chart here. I'll just get our bearings. So, yeah, look... Um, as you know, we're, <clears throat> we've got this A wave here and we pretty much nailed this B wave here down, down into this area here, a little bit tricky. But then we're looking for a move further further up into this area here and we just haven't got it, have we? So, And what's a little bit um, different now is I can see that this is the same as the Euro here as well. So we've got this five waves down through here. Because we've got five waves down, that means we get a three wave counter trend and then another five waves down. So if we have a look at that on the smaller thing here of the five minute chart here um, there we go so we can can really see that five wave structure the third wave the little five wave structure here for the for the because we've got five here that's got to be the a wave the b wave to here and the c wave to here not that it's very clean or clear or anything but um, that's it and then we've got the little fifth wave down through to here so we should see a bounce off this 96 again but the bounce that we see this time will only be um, you know will only be well the norm is if I put that to there is 61.8 to there this is the first supply level second so it may only come to here and roll over from there um, it will have resistance there anyway so you will see it struggle from that point and come back uh, and if that's the case then you'll see to have another crack at it up here depending on what the rest of the market's doing and, and how far the US dollar pulls back if it only pulls back to 84.20 then we'll just have this small one here and a down through here but if it pulls back to 84 then this will pull back uh, up through here as well through here um, sorry not that high but to uh, probably just a bit lower than that but anyway in this area here somewhere so um, yeah then look to short it from from that point there alrighty well uh, that's that's that um, yeah okay well thanks for for listening and um, I was just reading in the paper there that uh, that the longest living person is 116 years of age in Japan, born in, born in uh, 1897. So there's uh, a bit of hope for all of us. <laughs>